My personal philosophy is play till the day you die. I just can't imagine what I would retire to. You know, I would be miserable in anything that it didn't have to do with some musicological moment. Mickey Hart's most enduring musicological moment lasted more than four decades as a drummer with the Grateful Dead. Their timeless fusion of rock, blues, folk, country, and improvisation created legions of followers affectionately called deadheads. Even Walter Cronkite was a deadhead. As they say, it was a long, strange trip, and it really was. The Grateful Dead not only took me around the world, it took me out of the world. It took me to a whole other place to be able to see things that I would never been able to see perception-wise, dealing with, with the cosmos and, you know, with the idea that music and sound and vibrations are everywhere. From exploring the global roots of rhythm with some of the world's top percussionists that he brought together for his Planet Drum Band, to traveling the world recording indigenous music, Mickey has been working with the Library of Congress and the Smithsonian on preserving the traditional music he has been recording as part of his lifelong search for the essential rhythms of life on the planet. Well, I am a song catcher. I mean, I, I love to record. I love the idea of taking pictures of music. It's like a snapshot of a culture. From Tibet, it was the Gyoto Tantra Choir, the multiphonic choir. Each monk has the ability to sing three notes simultaneously, and it's the Dalai Lama's choir. So I gotten to know the Dalai Lama. His Holiness, you know, is one of the greatest rhythm masters on the planet. Now Mickey's search for the source of the essential rhythms of life has gone intergalactic and back to the beginning of the cosmos. You know, the moment of creation, the beginning of time and space, when the blank page of the universe exploded and created the stars, the planets, black holes, uh, pulsars, supernovas, this was the beginning of time and space. The beginning, it created the sun, it created the moon, it created the earth, and then us. And then we are still now toying with this rhythmic stimuli that was created 13.7 billion years ago. What is neat is somebody who's artistic to hear these sounds and be inspired by them and turn them into something that's really pleasing for people to hear. Astrophysicist Dr. George Smoot earned a Nobel Prize for charting the origins of what many believe to be the beginning of creation with the Big Bang. He, too, is a deadhead. We're in the same business. Basically, yeah. it's vibrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know. Know. I know he had a good undergraduate education. <laughs> George is a great guy to be around, and he opens your mind for sure. But see, George really didn't think of the universe in sonics. And that's all I'm really interested in. I'm not really interested so much in his waveforms. He can show me waveforms of the first million years and all that. And that's really great. But as soon as I see that, I said, give me those waveforms, George. And let's see what they sound like. And let's, you know, let's dance to those things. And, and let's, and, and George said, yeah. With the help of the University of California Berkeley's supercomputer, Dr. Smoot's team converted the light wave traces of the Big Bang into sound waves for Mickey's team. It's very inharmonic, it's very dense. There's a lot of collisions up there and there's a lot of bumps and grinds and pulses and stuff, and noise, which you wouldn't call music. But I take it and I make it into what the human ear would call music so we can enjoy it. We're getting there, George! I'm getting there, George! Feel it beating. The big, giant heart just throbbing away. A good, strong heart. A good, strong life. It's really simple. Good rhythm. Good life. These good vibrations that Mickey believes emanated from space to become part of every culture are also why medical researchers believe why the fundamental rhythms of these drum circles can be a healing art. 
The first connection to music as a healing power really had to be with my grandmother, who had advanced Alzheimer's. And she hadn't spoken in about six or eight months. We were in a car, and I had a little drum, and I started playing the drum. And she looked over, and she said my name. I said, Grandma, you spoke. And she, and she smiled at me, and she kept saying my name. And, and I realized that the drum had triggered that response in her. Somehow that had reconnected her. You know, the neural pathways that were broken were somehow reconnecting. That was my first inkling of the therapeutic powers of music. Since we were created a vibration, since the universe is a vibration, and the body is a vibration, and music is controlled vibrations, it seems natural that when you put back vibrations, or good vibrations, as it were, uh, or stimuli, that somehow you would come, become alive again, you would reconnect. Medical researchers studying the effects of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease are now working with Mickey on the possibility of creating rhythms from the electrical pulses given off by healthy brains to repair diseased brains. Hospitals use music therapy, uh, particularly for children, as their healing, and patients who are in, sometimes in comatose states, music is used to try to re-stimulate uh, some of their connections and their awareness. The idea is what causes them to reconnect, how we can do, how can we repeat this on a daily basis? Just like a, just like a prescription for a medicine, this would be sound tonic, sonic medicine. What frequencies, what rhythms have been cut or broken and then be able to replace that with a, with a healthier rhythm, a healthier sound, a healthier uh, frequency perhaps that will make this therapy a legitimate science. It's not about drums and drumming. It's not about the Grateful Dead. It's about what it does and the thing that you do with it. I don't look at it as an encore. I don't look at it as the end. The end when the end comes, I hope to be playing my music, you know, I mean, the thing about music is you can do it till the day you die. There are, there's no music police, or there's nobody tells you to retire, or you're too old to enjoy the vibrations and be with music.